Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Witch Hunter. That's the guy you can see on screen right now and as always I'm going to show you some gameplay in the first half of the video and in the second half of the video we're going to take a look at the perks, mutations, equipment and everything else. So this time around I'm pretty stoked to bring you something and what we're actually going to take a look at here is basically a power armor using crossbow archer. And I gotta say, um, this is another one of the, basically, the subscriber requests, which uh, I'm really stoked, by the way, that you guys actually put in some, some ideas and, and so on. It's really a lot of fun to work on builds that have these kind of um, fixed premises going on. And this time around, what was going on is basically what you're seeing here. Um, the idea was to use, make some kind of night gameplay by using a crossbow and power armor and yeah uh, gladly there is a pretty cool skin that we can use here which is the um, by the way i'm not hitting anything here but yeah this should have done it and yeah um there is a pretty cool skin here wasteland night skin um i was kind of banking on using this in the future for something like a warhammer 40k inspired build or something um just because yeah the shoulder patterns really work well but uh, ultimately, yeah, um, I had to use this here and the other fixed premise was yeah to use a crossbow Unfortunately when it comes to the crossbow, it's not like we have any options really I mean we do have a crossbow um, to my knowledge. There's not a single skin for it And yeah, so uh, what we have is what we got. Um, I mean to be honest, I always liked the crossbow, it's a kind of cool weapon, and especially nowadays since they have made some um, adjustments and gave us the ability to um, use stuff like um, explosive receiver, which we are using here. And by the way, I just used some blight soup here, because as you could probably already tell, um, this build here is heavily centered around the use of crits. Um, we're getting a crit on every second hit, which is pretty cool. and for the longest time was not possible within power armor um, just because when power armor wasn't um, able to get legendary effects um, there was no way to get the necessary uh, 23 luck that we do have here by using legendary luck base luck of 15 and three pieces of power armor with the extra luck legendary effect and in addition to that we do have the um, 15% uh, faster vets crits legendary effect on our crossbow and as you can see here single hit refills our critical meter and that's pretty much key to what we have been doing here now when I went into this build I mean it was obviously a little bit challenging because one big problem with the crossbow is its lack of DPS now it has always been a kind of cool weapon um, pretty much always being used in vets um, and in stealth just because yeah you have to reload every single shot now for a time there were quad crossbows which were pretty cool I mean they weren't really overpowered or anything just because you had to reload every single shot manually um, so it was a nice little little trade-off but yeah I really like them and yeah they had their legacy now so that was out of the picture so I had to go for crits basically it was the only approach and stealth was obviously uh, off the table um, just by the fact that one of the premises for this build here was to use power armor so yeah this is what i ultimately came up with and i quite like it now as a support for situations where we do lack dps um, we do have basically the option to just be a very efficient uh, grenadier we do have demo expert just to boost our damage from the from the weapon itself and that in and of itself means that we can use grenades pretty efficiently now my grenade of choice on this occasion isn't even something that i actually use a lot for dps but rather the pumpkin grenade which is kind of hard to farm um you really have to dedicate yourself a little bit to it but it's not like it's a necessary part of this build i just really like the visuals and um it actually marked animals uh, enemies so enemies that you will hit with this weapon uh, will receive more damage over the next few seconds so this is pretty great also has a really big radius with the grenadier perk which is cool and yeah that's pretty much the whole trick to this build there's not 
too much to go over in depth. Um, basically, yeah, we're trying to get all of our extra damage from crits. On this occasion, I do use an overdrive. And yeah, the damage I increased on the crossbow comes from the junkies effect, which really isn't uh, a very beloved effect nowadays, just because there's there's quite a few better options. I mean, anti-armor in a lot of situations will perform good or, in my opinion, even better than Junkies with the added addition that you don't have any debuffs, which you will have when you run Junkies, just because you have to be addicted to five different um, to five different drugs in order to get the, the most out of it, which is, I think, 50% extra damage. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, not a little kind of support that I do have within this build, which is something I really like to use uh, in a lot of cases, where just, yeah, my, my uh, ability to deal with groups of weaker enemies is, is limited, um, is I'm using Pain Train here, which I love the perk. Um, people who have watched more than one of my videos probably have seen me use it at some point, just because... Um, yeah, I, I always liked it a lot for the simple reason that it is really what I like to see in perks, which is giving you a unique mechanic, transforming your gameplay a little bit, and in situations like this here, it won't do a whole lot. It's a little bit laggy in Fallout 76 for obvious reasons, but um, especially if you're fighting stuff like Ghouls or Scorched, it can actually be relatively powerful, like two or three hits uh, from your power armor will be enough to take down a level uh, 60 ghoul. So, yeah, that's that's not a whole lot, especially considering that you can just sprint through whole bunches of them and hit a lot of them, which, yeah, overall, pretty great. And another little thing that I could mention about this build is I am using Strangler Hard Power Armor. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of a passive damage going on, and for especially weaker animal uh, enemies sometimes it's enough to if you're not one-shotting them uh, kill them off with the added acid damage uh, to your shots which obviously if it happens it's fun and it, it just adds a tiny bit of dps now in situations where you would really need it talking about like level 100 super mutants and stuff it won't help you out a whole lot but ultimately um there wasn't really any specific choice i went for um being in power armor in and of itself makes us tanky, also gives us the ability to use um, Endurance as our dumpstead, which you will see later. And yeah, there, there had to be a little bit of compromise in this build. And one big factor I haven't addressed yet is the fact that typically um, I'm doing something here that typically you won't see a whole lot, uh, which is, and by the way, I'm just checking here, I think I have... Do I have a disease at the moment? No, I don't. I obviously, I would have seen it on the, on the display, on the HUD. Uh, yeah, um, just thought that I had blight from uh, Scorch Beast attacks and that would have brought me down to less than 23 luck, which I need in order to get my crits and therefore I would have needed to heal myself from that um, disease. But uh, yeah, uh, not necessary as it turns out. Uh, for once, by the way, um, we wouldn't have any problem with the Assaultron here, just because we do have power armor and therefore electric absorption. And of course, on this occasion, he's not here, so yeah. Anyways, uh, what I was talking about is, yeah, using vets in power armor. This is always something people avoid for good reason, because you do run through fusion cores very fast. Now, there's one big reason why it works on this occasion, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, it's still, you will consume quite a few fusion cores, but it's not ridiculous. Like, if you're going for a commando build, that's commando build in power armor, that's using that, yeah, you will run through fusion cores by the minute. But on this occasion, the low fire rate of this weapon actually helps us out here, because while still per shot you actually use quite a bit of um, quite a bit of uh, fusion core charge it's not too ridiculous just by the simple fact that you're not shooting a whole lot 
And yeah, that's basically the whole trick to it. I mean, we do have power user and we do also have cooling vents on our limbs, but um, that's just because, as I said, I am using Strangler Heart Power Armor, which in fact does use the modifications for Ultra Side Power Armor, which are not so easy to come by and therefore I don't have calibrated shocks. So yeah, those 10% less fusion core drainage I get from the cooling vents, I would easily um, trade them off for more carry weight with calibrated shocks if I had them on this occasion. And yeah, other than that, I mean you see that we are actually doing relatively well, which still was surprising. Now, when I was first talking with Doctoro, shout out, shout out to Doctoro, by the way, um, who came up with the idea. I'm pretty sure I failed to mention that in the beginning of the video. Um, we were talking a little bit about how he envisioned it and everything. And um, one idea was that, yeah, we will probably need something as a backup. By the way, on this occasion, you saw acid damage doing its thing. Um, it wasn't quite enough to kill off the super mutant here, but um, you saw it quite quite um, distinctively here. Um, yeah, that's what I was talking about with on lower level stuff like level 50 super mutants, which don't have a lot of poison resistance. Um, you can actually see some benefit from the acid damage. Level 75, not so much as you can see here. It's basically non-existent, which is a big gripe I do have with Strangler Hard Power Armor, but that's just yeah uh, another story and i feel like i have talked about it a lot and yeah uh one big thing we were thinking about is that we would probably need something like uh a backup so the idea was maybe to use um a melee weapon and make a hybrid build um by the way i think i should have uh yeah i used the stim pack there probably wasn't really necessary but uh couldn't have hurt and yeah the idea was we probably need a little bit of a backup just for group situations and everything. But uh, my problem with that idea ultimately turned out to be that first it wasn't necessary actually. Just because I feel like with explosions, far flung fireworks and um, the ability to deal damage by running into enemies. Which also by the way gets benefit from the acid damage as far as I can tell. I'm, I mean I'm not quite sure if it's just by proximity and passive damage from the Strangler Heart Armor or if it actually gets um, extra damage from being attacked. But um, yeah, between all of those factors, I actually felt like I could live without um, making this a hybrid build. And I was really happy about this discovery for two distinct reasons. First being that obviously it's always cool if you do something like this, like a little bit more of a challenging build. Um, it, it, and it turns out better than you initially thought that's obviously a cool thing right so yeah that was the first big thing and the second reason is that i would have felt like it, it would have been really hard to um to to do a hybrid build on this occasion where the this the melee weapon wouldn't be too good if that makes sense because Talking about visuals here a little bit, um, sadly we don't really have any cool swords in the game, at least in my opinion, that would have worked with the the knight aesthetic, even Wasteland Knight kind of thing. So the the go-to approach here would have been a Super Slash with the Morning Star skin, which would have been really cool, would have worked really well with the character. But um, the problem is, yeah, that even with just a little bit of of investment Morningstar melee build would have probably been better in a lot of situations than the crossbow uh, a little bit less tedious and therefore yeah it, it, I don't like hybrid builds where you have an option in the build that you just use to use it so uh, whenever I do hybrid builds I like if every single aspect of the build has its use and has its niche and uh, the moment I would have used something like incisor and martial artist probably I would have just 99% of the time went with the morning star and would have ignored the crossbow which kind of would have failed the idea of the build so yeah ultimately I decided to not use any other weapons other than the um, grenades and obviously um by the way this means you can just use something like a fat man with extra vets hit chance or something 
and it will work perfectly fine. So if you want to participate in Scorch Beast Queen fights in a meaningful way, um, just do that. You do have the option. It, it just works in, in the words of the almighty Todd Howard. Uh, so yeah, it's not like this build is useless by any means. You can just switch to an explosive build by using another weapon. But as I said, for 99% of the time, due to the fact that we are tanky enough to just stay within uh, damage uh, that we, we are being shot at with, it, it doesn't feel too slow, this build. It actually feels like you're killing stuff relatively quickly. The time to kill is not crazy unless you encounter something like a Sheep Squatch. And yeah, you don't feel flimsy or anything, it's, it's, yeah, I just never encounter a situation where I feel like, oh, fuck, I'm playing with a crossbow power armor build. And, yeah, that was really surprising to me, so, yeah, can't say a lot. I mean, we do have extra crit damage, by the way, as a legendary effect on top of junkies and the vet's crits filling faster. So, yeah, um, another cool thing, depending on how you look at it, but, I mean, about using the crossbow here is that one big drawback to going for a vet's crits on every second shot approach on a full health build is you are pretty much relying on the third star legendary effect on your weapon being um, vet's crits feeling faster. It's it's just a must have um, if you're going this approach unless you want to go low health and use um, go up to like 34 luck or just do it with temporary buffs on a full health build so you often miss out on on pretty good stuff like faster reload uh talk about a railway rifle for example it, it always feels like a missed opportunity to not have stuff like faster reload and on this occasion yeah faster reload is off the table as far as i know faster reload doesn't exist for the crossbow and there's no way to increase the the reload speed of the crossbow for some reason. Now I do have Speed Demon on this build and I, initially I thought I felt like it was reloading faster but ultimately I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But anyways, uh, it was a long story, I had a lot to talk about on this occasion but I ultimately feel like yeah we are done and I feel like yeah everything went fine. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay part of the video so far and now we're going to take a look at the in-depth information like starting off with our mutations here and on this occasion no we're not starting off with our mutations but rather our debuffs or rather our addictions that I choose because if you are going for a junkies build it's always wise to choose some addictions um, a bit carefully in, in a lot of situations at least. I mean you're never going to be super crippled by addictions but it can't hurt to r allocate them in a way that the debuffs aren't too heavy for you. So on this this occasion I really try to avoid um, um, addictions that would first of all hurt my luck. So debuffing luck was a no-go and other than that yeah perception and agility if I could, I'd try to avoid them, but uh, you will see I do have two addictions that will debuff those attributes, but not by a lot. So, yeah, starting off with buff out, minus one endurance, minus one strength. Um, I already told you endurance is our dumpstead just because, yeah, we really bunk on the fact that we are using power armor here. And for a power armor build, you are not super tanky, but you're not super flimsy either, so it's fine. And strength really doesn't do anything for us, so we can happily go down with it. Then we do have Fury, Strength and Perception. This is one of the addictions I mentioned. We do have minus one to Perception, but ultimately we can live with it. Uh, especially since every second shot will hit for sure, just because it will be a crit. So what I do a lot, uh, I'm not sure if I've done it a lot in the video, but uh, I have found out that oftentimes... I just target the torso for um, filling my crit and then on the second shot switching over to the head and using a crit there just because the absolute majority of our damage comes from our crits anyways and hitting the, the torso you always have a good chance um, if you are in range so that went, that way worked out pretty perfectly. So yeah, that's what I did for a lot of times. Now, Mentad's Addiction, this is just, in my opinion, one of a must-have if you go for a... Um, 
for a junkies build you can never go wrong with mantad's addiction it's minus one charisma it's absolutely useless unless for sharing perks this build here is a solo build so it doesn't matter at all then we have overdrive uh, minus one strength already said pretty unimportant for us but agility yeah you will see though other than with pretty much every single other vets build i have done um, agility is not a dumpstead for us but it's surprisingly low for a vets build but you just don't need a whole lot ap um not that the crossbow in and of itself is a super action point efficient weapon but you're not doing a whole lot of shots and every now and then you will have time to refresh your action points which you saw during the video we never really run out of um ran out of ap wasn't a problem and lastly we do have um uh, psycho addiction so yeah minus one to strength and minus 10 to damage resistance um medics would have been a good choice too but i just didn't have medics here it could not be crafted and i couldn't be bothered to import it from another character so yeah that's basically it we still have um benefit from our blight soup here plus 100 crit damage massive boost um usually i not use um temporary buffs but on this occasion i really felt like yeah th this build can use it and yeah blight soup super readily available i mean there's no real reason if you are running a vets build to not always be on blight soup lasts for half an hour with no perks or anything and super easy to craft so yeah take it uh by the way 15 uh, 50 percent extra crit damage standard but it's 100 because of one of our mutations which we are going to take a look at now starting off with bird bones um extra agility nice for vets build obviously strength as i said dumpstead then we do have eagle eyes this gives us a little extra perception and yet more crit damage we really bunk on crit damage here so this is perfect yet again minus four strength fuck it then we have grounded just because it didn't really hurt on this occasion extra energy resistance um at the cost of less energy gun damage we're not using an energy gun so yeah it's just 300 energy resistance absolutely not necessary uh due to the fact that we have high energy resistance to begin with and we do have electric absorption so really not necessary you can definitely live without grounded it's just that it has virtually no downside to our build then we do have healing factor we really don't need a whole lot of chems um on this build just because we are in power armor so yeah and we can readily spam stim packs in power armor without any um animation to go through so i found that yeah having health regen after every single fight was a nice thing to have then we do have Herbie Ward. This was the mutation I just touched upon when I was talking about the Blight Soup. Just doubling the benefits from um, from plant-based food and drink items. So, yeah. Basically, it's just here to give us 100 extra crit damage rather than 50% from Blight Soup. And then we do have Marsupial and Speed Demon. Now, Marsupial, just for jump height, extra carry weight, always nice to have. Speed Demon, yeah, I quickly touched upon it. Um, obviously, the movement speed is always nice, but arguably, this would have been one of those um, builds where we could have definitely lived without it because I'm pretty sure it just doesn't give us extra re reload speed on the crossbow. And my my uh, understanding of the situation is that uh, when it comes to the crossbow and when it comes to the bow itself, the the reload speed is tied to the animation, which has something to do with the engine, yada yada. So um, yeah, sadly the reload speed you do have is fixed, which yeah is a shame. I mean, it would be super cool if we could make this thing reload super fast. Um, in my opinion, Bethesda should go all in on such stuff, even if it looks ridiculous. Um, it would be way more fun to use weapons like this. But anyways, we have what we have. So just so you know, I think Speed Demon doesn't uh, increase reload speed here. And lastly, we do have Unstable Isotope. Um, synergizes relatively well with the passive damage coming from our um, Strangler Heart armor. But um, yeah, like that passive damage it's not going to end the fight for you uh, basically ever it's it's not that powerful so you can live without it it just doesn't have a downside for us going over to our equipment here it is our junkies ex uh, explosive vets crits extra damage faster vets crits crossbow 
what a mouthful um we do have iron sights which just give us the best accuracy here and we do have explosive frame now starting the build off i was going with a um prime frame but um ultimately with the junkies uh effect the and demo expert we're actually doing more damage with the explosive frame than with the um, prime frame so um it was kind of a no-brainer and even if i wouldn't have gone with the explosive frame i probably would have chosen um to use demo expert anyways for additional grenade support and everything so yeah this is how it turned out also gives us some area of effect which is nice and since the um crossbow is one of those weapons that doesn't have any damage altering modifications other than the frame um turning it into explosive actually is pretty effective which is nice and yeah i didn't regret it a single time so we do have 212 ballistic damage without any adrenaline going on which is okay i mean if this thing would fire faster it would actually be pretty great and yeah not a whole lot else to say here really ammo efficient we ran through like 200 bolts during the video so that's actually pretty pretty good in my opinion and condition i mean keep in mind we do have some perks that um help us with that but yeah we started off with 200 percent condition and we lost about 25 percent i would say so it's actually surprisingly durable i i going into this video i thought to remember that this thing breaks really quickly but maybe they patched it or something um actually i'm surprised it holds together really well so um yeah good to go on this occasion then here we do have our pumpkin grenades by far not the most damaging uh grenades i mean yeah 211 damage pretty similar to our crossbow in and of itself uh 40 radiation resistant uh, damage also not something that's going to do a whole lot for us i basically just throw these things around in groups because they give us some extra damage for the following shot i mean five seconds but that's basically the following shot on this occasion and yeah they make a big let's let's just show it again they make a big orange cloud, which is kind of cool. I, I liked it. For some reason, I felt it fit the character. So, yeah. Uh, I also do have some explosive bait here, which I planned on using, but I didn't really. Um, and, yeah. Then we do have our armor, and really, really not impressive here. Um, the only thing here uh, that's of interest is I do have two pieces with AP refresh, and the rest has plus one extra luck. Um, that's everything else I was looking for. Now, when it comes to the helmet, in terms of modifications, I do have a sensor array giving me some extra perception, which should never be your number one choice. I mean, I would always take the VETS metrics overlay, or how it is called, that gives you straight up extra VETS hit chance. Um, would have been nice, but yet again, getting modifications for Strangler Heart power armor isn't that easy and yeah it wasn't ultimately too necessary but yeah keep in mind we could increase our vets hit chance by those means and yeah other mutations the only thing i uh, not mutations but modifications i think the only thing i have modified here is our torso with core assembly for extra armor uh, action point refresh which obviously synergizes very well with a uh, with the two powered legendary effect pieces and yeah, that leaves us with our perks. And I, I, I was talking a whole lot about how strength is one of our dumb stats. Um, it's not actually in, in terms of our um, base strength. It's just because all of the debuffs we do have, uh, while having 11 strength base, I think in all reality, I mean, let me quickly check. Yeah, we only have four strength. Um, so yeah, this was really where we were dunking all of our debuffs basically. But there were some perks that were useful to necessary on this occasion necessary for me traveling pharmacy just because i had a few um problems with carry weight and yeah this would have been unnecessary if i had ex access to calibrate shocks here but even then i would probably use it then we do have bandolier just to um easy burden easy sorry ease the burden of our um ammo uh, i mean Bolts aren't super heavy, but um, if you want to carry like 4,000 around for some reason, you can with Bandelier. Then we do have Ordnance Express, yet some, again something that helps with carry weight, because yeah, um, grenades can quickly become a burden yet again, so yeah, that helps us here. 
and lastly pain train i didn't really show it too much in action but that's just because uh, when it comes to the route i'm using for my videos there's not a whole lot of situations where it becomes really useful but um where it shines is for example white springs golf course uh, golf club house thingy lots of ghouls sprint through them turn around sprint through them again half of them are dead nice thing then we do have perception here's a lot going on i mean the obvious thing here was the archer master archer and expert archer um maxed out for extra damage um, then we do have bow before me, extra armor penetration and stagger chance. Not a stagger chance, just because we shoot so um, less frequent. Um, it doesn't really help us too much here. We're really here for the armor penetration and that's basically it. But it's necessary in my opinion. Probably more effective to have 36% uh, armor penetration than having 20% uh, extra damage. So this should be your priority and yeah ultimately uh, in the beginning i went with rank 3 of concentrated fire but ultimately decided to go with rank 1 just so we can target individual limbs so yet again something that kind of diminishes our ability to um hit targets reliably just because rank 3 would have been better here but i really wanted to have grenadier now uh, i'm pretty sure it doesn't affect the radius of our explosion from our crossbow but it was mainly here so we can use our grenades a little bit more efficiently going over to endurance speaking about grenades um fireproof was kind of necessary here we are in power armor we don't have access to a dance chest piece we still take some damage from our own explosions it's just not by any means a burden so yeah rank 3 of fireproof was necessary otherwise we would have killed ourselves a lot with grenades and our own shots but this makes it so um that's not the case even though we take a little damage from it but most of the times no problem and yeah that's all of the investment i would have loved to have cam fiend here for example just so we can use um stuff like overdrive which i used once during the video when we were fighting the scorch beast a little more efficiently may turning it into a six minute cam and not a three minute buff but yeah ultimately i just ran out of perk points and this was a sacrifice i was willing to make and then we talk about uh charisma at rank four lone wanderer more ap refresh a little bit more tankiness now you could debate i mean there's neither here nor there you don't necessarily need to turn this build into a solo build or a team build you can go for whatever you like i mean the team build could have made sense just to get some extra damage from taking one for the team could have really helped on the situation i guess but um ultimately i wanted to have a little bit more defense from um, lone wanderer and in addition to that extra ap refresh because as i said our agility is pretty low for a vats build and yeah then we had intelligence at 13 relatively high i mean a lot of people want to max this out for experience gain but for me oftentimes intelligence is not something i pump more than like six or seven points into so on this occasion we do have power user gunsmith and demo expert now power user as i said we are a vets built in power armor so this is definitely kind of necessary to not run through fusion course too quickly um, which yeah on this occasion i think it's really manageable i mean during the course of the video we ran through like one fusion core and you do have a good chance that you will refill your fusion core in the meantime if you're fighting super mutants a lot or something it really isn't a problem and yeah in combination with power user it's actually really manageable then we do have gunsmith and as you saw we lost like 25 percent duration you could easily live without it on this occasion but i still like the convenience of it so it's here just so our weapon doesn't break so fast and then we do have demo expert makes a huge difference on this occasion um as i said with the crossbow and the explosive frame it actually is very beneficial we do have 212 damage with it and without it we do have 191 so um i mean huge difference was probably an overstatement but you get the point here it's it's noticeable enough and especially as i said since we are using grenades as a as a secondary it helps us uh by the way one thing i didn't mention is having the crossbow equipped with the junkies effect also carries over to our throwables so yeah you can 
also buff your throwable damage just by holding your weapon in your hand, which works really well in making throwables and grenades a viable backup. Um, also, there, I mean, if you have seen the video from Turtle lately, um, since we are a crit build, pretty much always have a crit readily available, you could really do some hefty damage by throwing uh, something like a nuke grenade or a quantum grenade and uh, while it's in the air targeting your enemy in vets and activate a crit and go for the head it, it, there's some serious potential there um not want to spoil anything check out angry turtles video about it it's one of his first videos if you go to his channel like in chronological order so yeah you should find it uh, it's a possibility nothing i did in the video though then we do have agility and yeah um this was pretty much the the most uncomfortable set, uh, compromise i had to take here but yeah i went with adrenaline because i always do um i mean on this occasion we already don't have tenderizer so yeah adrenaline needed to be here um we can take every single bit of damage we can take basically so yeah it was necessary then we do have Gunfu. Now this is, yeah, you don't necessarily need it. Every now and then it will happen um, that you make use out of it, and it's nice to have. I just like the gimmick, and for one perk point, I wanted to have it here. Um, same for Bone Survivor. Um, both of these are necessary, but um, yeah, I I really fiddled around a little bit with my perk uh, with my perk point allocation, and ended up with as much agility as I could justify. Uh, on this build which was 10 so yeah two things i wanted to have desperately was action boy here faster ap refresh and adrenaline because it was pretty clear i won't have a whole lot of action points available so having fast action point refresh was necessary i mean if you're fighting with a commander or something even fast ap refresh makes it uncomfortable to use vets if you have low amount of action points but on such a slow firing weapon like this you can get away um, with low action points if you have fast action point refresh so yeah um, this was necessary and adrenaline was necessary and that meant I was left with two perk points to fill uh, which isn't enough for anything else really so yeah I went with rank 1 of Gun Fu and Born Survivor yeah and lastly, luck. This is um, this was pretty much the first thing this was, that was set in stone with this build here. Um, this had to be maxed out. We do have Bloody Mass yet again, a little bit more damage. Grim Reaper Sprint, better criticals and um, critical savvy. This is, as I always say, the whole the trinity of Vets builds in my opinion. And especially with the combination of 23 luck that we do have and um, the vets crits filling faster perk critical savvy makes it so one shot refills our critical meter so yeah this was the corner piece better criticals very obvious if we uh, do a crit on every second shot we do take uh, obviously increasing them is really beneficial to us grim reaper sprint always nice to have yet again especially since we don't have a whole lot of action points to begin with so this really helps us we could live without it just because we have fast ap refresh but it still helps and um lastly we do have start genes here which is obvious we want to keep our mutations not get any new ones and um yeah uh, as always due to the fact that we do have to use start genes and pretty much everything else is uh three rank perks we do end up with one leftover um point in luck that we can throw in wherever we like basically and i decided to go with luck of the draw which my advice always just try it out with the weapon it really in my opinion you can't tell if it works well with it where there are certain weapons where you think this would have would be an awesome perk and it just doesn't work well at all you will never see it proc um and then there are weapons where it just works better in my opinion i mean it's luck based and i might be off here but on this occasion i felt like it actually worked really well for just being one point of investment and yeah ultimately there wasn't anything else i could really use here and whew, that leaves us with legendary perks four boring ones agility luck intelligence and strength now the only one that goes above our 15 base is luck here for obvious reasons um, the rest really is here to increase our uh, access to perk points. Then we do have electric absorption, must have perk whenever you are in power armor, in my opinion. It really is one of the best choices and 
helps you so much. And on this occasion, actually, the feature of restoring um, fusion core uh, energy is also something I actually really like. And yeah, that leaves us with far flung fireworks. Um, said it a lot. Not the most useful perk in the world, not really reliable, but it can help. And yeah, um, if you go for a for a, per, a team based build here by not using Lone Wanderer but using like Tenderizer and Stranger Numbers, or invest those perk points into something else, um, this would be the perk I would switch out in order to get taking one for the team, which arguably would lead to better results. But anyways. That was it. I feel like this was a longer video, but ultimately I had a lot of fun with this build. Thanks again, Doctora, for the idea and have a nice time. Bye.